What's going on everyone? So today I'm making a video for my Stamina Dragonite. It's a PvP build for Clockwork City and it's kind of an update to a build I made back in actually the first build I ever put on this channel which was a uh, fire poison proc build from one Tamriel and it was kind of a different take on things back then when the meta was Tremor Scale, Viper, Black Rose. And that's kind of what I tried to do here with this build. I just wanted to run something different, something fun. So, uh, it's kind of what I tried to do, but it's a Sword and Board 2H build. Heavy Armor, which is currently one of the metas going on for stamina builds. But, um, I'm running a somewhat unique set but that's not why I'm running it. I'm running it because it's it's made the game fun, honestly, to play it on this Dragonite, and it's strong in PvP, strong in duels. So I'm going to try to go through this as fast as possible just for anybody that wants to... It's just like build surfing or something, looking at different stuff that people is running. And um, then I'm going to talk about why I'm running the set, why I'm running what I'm running, and just couple different things about the build how I play it so um, just to try to make it quick I'm gonna go over the sets first so the first set is unfathomable darkness this is the somewhat different set that I'm running I don't see many people running it at all and uh, I've seen a couple people run it actually so I can't say nobody but I don't see that many people running it but it's um weapon crit physical penetration weapon damage for the four, th uh, two, three, and four piece. As far as the physical penetration goes, you don't see that in any other sets in the game right now. There used to be a set called Arms of the Ancestors, but that set has since died with one Tamriel. I have like a bow of it, but I can't find any other pieces, so I'm pretty sure it's out of the game. Sadly, because it was a pretty cool, unique set. Three piece physical penetration. For the uh, five piece on this set, when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to call a bunch of crows around to attack the enemy for 12 seconds. Deal it, uh, every three seconds, an enemy. Every three seconds, a crow will be sent to attack the enemy, dealing 5,000 physical damage once every 15 seconds. So it's got a three-second cooldown. This set procs quite often, if I'm honest. The crows are up most of the time, and it's it's very fun. It's hilarious to see the crows chase Nightblades out of stealth, and it's just a funny set to use. But on top of that, the crows do really good damage. I've been told by a few people that they had 12k recaps from the crows, which means that they would have been hit roughly for 3 to 4k for each crow, because how it works is one crow, four will spawn, and one at a time they'll attack the enemy. So you can kind of figure out who you want to attack by, whoever you're closest to. Regardless, I am running a sturdy shield on the front bar and a precise one hand. Ideally, you would want a Nern honed gold one hand, but honestly, on this bar, even though this is my main damage bar, it's not that important. I've run a defending and a precise one, and they've both been fine. Neither one was gold. If you want to go like a cheaper option and you don't want to run these poisons, which I recommend you run these poisons, but if you don't, I'd go with an infused one hand with the weapon damage glyph here. That would probably help the most to give you a lot of weapon damage. Second set is Fury. This helps a lot because this build has lower max resources, not like insanely low but just lower than what I would normally have so the health and stam helps the weapon damage is nice but the five piece is just awesome it's a great set it will give you up to 750 weapon damage based on how much damage you take so if you're constantly taking damage it'll stack pretty high all impen here all stam glyphs um, for the shoulder and head, I'm running Blood Spawn. Obviously, the Synergize is really good with the DK because of the ultimate. 
when you take damage, you have a 6% chance to gain 14 ultimate and increase your physical and spell resist by 6,000. So, obviously with the DK passives, this is definitely a bonus. But I'll show some other sets that are pretty good after. For the jewelry, I have three pieces of unfathomable darkness. This is all robust and drops in Clockwork City. And I have two weapon damage, one reduced cost. I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep this yet. I'm still kind of playing around with it. I'm either going to go one weapon damage, one reduced cost, one recovery, or swap this reduced cost for a recovery and keep the two weapon damage. Because with Fury, you can get like well over 4,000 weapon damage, probably closer to 4,500, fully buffed with everything propped. So, I could possibly lose a little, but unbuffed, it, it looks underwhelming. So, that's about it. Oh, this is one of the most important parts. The Asylum Mall. So, again, this is good with a DK. Um... When you deal damage with the verse slice, you generate up to 14 ultimate based on how much execute bonus damage you do. So, definitely synergizes well. I have the weapon damage glyph on this weapon because I'll heavy attack into a leap. And the poisons are good on this bar again, which is the bar that I use to just whittle somebody down enough to get them to like 60% or so where I can just take them out with a leap. Now, for the Maul versus the Sword, I talked to somebody yesterday that told me a Maul is better if they have if the enemy has over 24,000 resistance, the Sword is better if they're under. If that's the case, and I'm just taking his word for it at this point, but it really doesn't matter to me, that's why I haven't looked into it more. If that's the case, it still doesn't matter because I'd rather have the option to ignore 20% of somebody's resistance than the Sword damage. I just don't see 5% damage as being that much, at least on this type of build. And um, definitely Nern Honed. For consumables, I'm running Dubious. It's just too good to pass up, but I think that you could get away with tri stat food if you really wanted to. And any potion of your choosing would work um, in duels. In an open world, I definitely would recommend like detect pots, but these are the most important ones right here. Even just speed pots would be fine if you don't want to go immovable, but immovable speed and stamina are ideal. The movement speed buff will be up for 40 seconds, down for 5 seconds. If your alchemy is maxed, it'll be up for 47 seconds, I believe. And that is definitely necessary. So for my skills, I got Volatile Armor, Forward Momentum, Reverse Slice, Reflective Scales, Vigor, and Take Flight. Take Flight, it's for 17k, but that is unbuffed with, well, with no fury. So that definitely goes up pretty high. If you don't want to run Reflect, I'd recommend Stampede or Trap Beast. Or Dragon's Blood even, or even Petrify. There's a lot of good abilities you can run on a DK. For my back bar, or my main bar, I guess I should call it, Igneous Reverb, which gives a 43% defile due to my CP, Noxious Breath, Heroic Slash, Venomous Claw. Love this ability. Spell Wall is the ultimate, but you could go corrosive which might even be better if you want to save up for the 200 cost um, noxious breath gives the fracture but you could go with puncture instead if you're more single target I guess but I like the dot that noxious breath gives all right for passives you'd want to go with everything for the dragonite all the 2h all the sword and board heavy medium Obviously, Assault and Support, Alchemy if you got it. Undaunted is really important, though, and Banish the Wicked is also important because a lot of people are vampires and werewolves. If I had Undaunted and Gold Glyphs, I would expect my... Well, if I had that, I would actually go 5-1-1 one, and, one and put a medium 
head or like a yeah, medium head, light shoulders or vice versa. To get the undaunted, at least I would go six heavy, one medium, maybe five one and one. But regardless, that would give you a lot more resources. Okay, so I'm gonna pop up real quick. Go over my stats. So back bar, purple weapon again. It's not gold, it's not nerd hone, so the weapon damage is low. But like I said before, it doesn't matter, it's never affected me negatively having this amount of weapon damage, even though this is my main attack bar. Again, it's not the burst bar. It it's to drive somebody's health down to burst them down from the other bar. To get the crows to proc, um, to get some dots on them, reverb on them. So yeah. Um Thief Munda Stone in heavy armor for sure. And I have 32, almost 33,000 max dam, 17,500 max health, 950 recovery, 28,000 spell resist, 25,000 physical resist, and 2,700 crit resist. Would be 29 if I had the last piece of impen. On this bar, I have 2847 weapon damage. So, this looks low, but let me see if I can proc the weapon damage glyph here. So, that goes up to 3282. Now, ideally, what I'll do is heavy attack into a leap and then execute, get the uh, Asylum All bonus damage. But with Fury, I can't show Fury on the target skeleton, but with Fury, this goes up, like I said, well over 4,000. And um, as far as my race goes, I'm a Dark Elf, but I would not recommend this. This is another thing. If you were like a Red Guard, you would probably, I think you might have more recovery, maybe more max stam. But I wouldn't even recommend a Red Guard. I would recommend either an Argonian, Orc, or, well, not that I wouldn't recommend a Red Guard. I just like Argonian and Orc for most of my builds. Um, Red Guard would ju do just fine. Anything really. Stam oriented. But as far as I'm concerned, Orc and Argonian are my favorite build are class are races. Wow. Favorite races. For champion points. 26 Warlord. 64 Tenacity. 58 Befoul, that gives the 43% Defile. 56 Shadow Ward, 26 Tumbling. So you could stand to take a little bit out of each of these and throw it into Mooncalf if you wanted more recovery, but I don't need it. Master at Arms, I got 51. This really helps the leap damage. 13 Shattering Blows, 34 Thaumaturge, 28 Precise Strikes, 48 Piercing, and 56 Mighty. Okay, let's just pretend this didn't happen. Okay. 37 Ironclad, 48 Resistant, 37 Thick Skin, 49 Hardy, 49 Ellie, and 10 Heavy Armor Focus. So that's pretty much it. Um think I went over everything yeah okay so now I'm just gonna explain a couple things before I end this first of all like I was saying before this set's really fun it makes PvP fun right now um, dueling whatever it's definitely fun it is a good back bar set it has a really good three piece but also a two piece and a four piece and the five piece is good all around it's a it's a well-rounded good set but um on top of that night blades really aggravate me right now and it's awesome to watch the crows chase night blades out of stealth it's just if they're not good enough if they're mediocre night blade they freak out when they get pulled out of stealth and then they die because again this leap hits really really hard even without this proct it still hits hard like even without fury proct it still hits hard so when i'm buffed up all the way with fury or like even halfway it it only goes up and it only gets worse so 
The goal of this build is to obviously use ultimates as much as possible, but on top of that, one heavy attack gives me a good amount of resources back. So, oh, there's the pros. So, if I'm low, and as long as I can get a heavy attack out, which, you see that? Two heavy attacks missed. That's the problem with heavy attacks in this game, nothing else. But, yeah, if I get, if I can get some heavy attacks out, then I'm good to go. On top of potions, on top of having defenses, like rooms, and the ability to block a lot, which you can block a lot on this build, it's very survivable. The speed pods, you gotta kite around a little bit. But yeah, so the crows, they're really good and they're definitely fun to use, especially against Nightblades. Um, now as far as my rotation is concerned, usually I'll come in on somebody and just light attack reverb, and then I like heavy attack low slash a few times, apply my dots when needed. Buff bar, throw it away attack. And this is pretty much my rotation. But the whole point of it is when I get him a little low in health, I'll come over here and I'll heavy attack into him. Now, by then, hopefully they've attacked me enough that my um, Fury has procced and given me a decent amount of weapon damage. So it's very strong and it's very fun to play see in, in this game for me it's not always about going for a crazy min max build sometimes i just like to make a fun build that's different but still strong i don't want to get murdered like i don't want to go into pvp i don't want to go into duels and get destroyed so if i'm running something different i still like to make sure that it's decently strong and this is very fun to play so let me see and make sure that oh Alright, so, as far as, as far as other monster sets go, I've tried all these. All these are strong. Troll King. I fought some DKs running this instead of Blood Spawn in a 1v1, and it was pretty AIDS. Definitely makes them harder to kill, especially, like, I don't usually run Troll King on a build with Major Mending, but even with major mending this is still like this just adds to the problem it just adds to the crazy healing so it's very strong tremor scale is probably my least favorite out of all these but it's still strong you'd have to run puncture instead of uh, the breath but this procs pretty much all the time off cooldown like within five seconds at least reduces movement speed does good damage and people can see now that it's on the ground like the aoe but for some reason they don't most of the time they don't get out of it but i'd rather run scoria if i was going to run a damage set scoria procs a lot and it does huge damage puts a dot i mean not a dot it does a upfront 10k damage and um damages other people so even in pvp if i was like running maybe with another person i i might throw on scoria but i have used it in pvp and it, it does sometimes it works to my advantage sometimes i'm like you know if i would have had blood spawn and it would have procced i might have had that ultimate to throw out because the leap is the main part of this build like that is the main damage so I don't know. It's it's a decision to make, but they're both really good. Scoria you could have up every five seconds. The blood spawn is the chance to give you your uh, leap faster. But with all these dots on people, obviously Templars are a little tougher. But I have killed many Magplars and Stamplars on this build. Um, but with all the dots, with the defile, with the claw. And with all with the, the blood spawn, the low slash, and execute damage, it's just it's well rounded. On top of it, the crows the crows just make it fun. They're a good bonus, and I do feel like the penetration helps a lot.
that's it. That's the build. Um, if you have any questions, comment, and I'll try to answer them. But, whoa. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed if you run it.